you're going for cut. The best. The best. So good. So good. What's going on? You made quick work of the bucket. You nailed it, man. Fuck yeah. Love that shit. This will be my haircut for the whole set, if you're curious, the whole time. <laughs> this is the one I'm gonna have. I got this haircut and my mom was like, oh. Whitney. Whitney. Why did you do that? It's so unattractive. And I was like, Oh no! <laughs> what, are you not gonna fuck me now, Mom? Is that what? <laughs> oh no! Sorry, Kath. I didn't know. <laughs> is, I don't know if it's the haircut, but I, uh, I, I, have, I, have, I have weird people say weird shit to me all of the time. Uh, I toured a lot, a lot last year, and I was on the road, and I was at this Starbucks in Nebraska. So you know, what, pinnacle of society. <laughs> and I was going to use the bathroom, and there was this dude sitting next to the bathroom, uh, and he had a lot of his belongings with him. I would guess all of them. <laughs> and I have a lot of tattoos, and I have my sleeves rolled up, and I walked by him, and, and he goes, hey, I like your tattoos. And I was like, hey, I like your weed leaf hat. <laughs> and he goes, I have a tattoo. And then he proceeded to rise from his chair and lift up his shirt to his breasts. It was like the start of a play I didn't buy a ticket to. <laughs> and over his heart, there was a tattoo of a heart that was on fire. And then the severed hand of a lady giving the middle finger. And as he was putting his shirt back down, he said, yeah, I got it for my grandpa when he died. Uh, what? What? Who was your grandfather? Who was this warlock man sitting on his deathbed being like, Russ, oh God, Russ, I'm dying. Uh, Russ, I need you to get a tattoo of a heart that's over your heart that's on fire. Wait, there's more. And then there needs to be the severed hand of a lady giving the middle finger. And Russ, oh, oh God, Russ, my last dying breath. Show it to a stranger. Oh, God. <laughs> I, went back, I went back to the table I was sitting at with my friend, uh, and she goes, oh, did you, did you make a friend? <laughs> and I was like, no, but I saw my dad, so that was weird. <laughs> I should tell you I am, a, I am a lesbian. What, but your jacket. Um, <laughs> Like I said, weird people say weird things to me, and I don't know, I guess it's the lesbian thing too, because I came off stage on, uh, on, New Year, on New Year's Eve, I did a show, and I came off, right, as 2019 rang in, and this woman came up to me, this attractive woman, uh, and, and she said, I'm not drunk, you know how sober people do. <laughs> she said, I'm not drunk, are you really lesbian? Really lesbian is the way she, for I look like this and most of my act is about my relationship with women. If like quacks like a dyke, I don't fucking. <laughs> Short of making out with Ellen DeGeneres, I'm doing all of the quacks. That's, there's nothing left for me to. Also she said it like really lesbian, like I was calling into work and my boss didn't believe me. <laughs> I mean, can you not come in? Are you really lesbian? <laughs> I can't come into straight today. The weird thing was is she looked like my babysitter who I had a huge crush on when I was eight. My babysitter, Robin, who was 20. Robin was a vegan. Robin let me touch her bra once. I was in love. 
It wasn't, it wasn't like an important part of the bra. It was just like her bra strap. She was like, I have a velvet bra on. Do you want to feel it? And I was like, no, I don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> this is what I thought fingering was. I was a fucking idiot. <laughs> And I was crazy about Robin. I was nuts about Robin. I wanted to make Robin my girlfriend. Um, and so at eight, I decided that I would become vegan and then Robin would be my girlfriend. Yeah, right? The only barrier between our love is eggs, meat, and dairy, clearly. Like, <laughs> so I was, at eight, I decided to be a vegan. And I was vegan for three days and then I passed out. <laughs> Because I didn't make a plan. I just decided at eight that I wasn't going to eat eggs, meat, and dairy. And I'm from a small town here in Illinois, too. If you don't eat eggs, meat, or dairy at eight, you just go on an inadvertent gay Gandhi hunger strike for your love. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. I did, and I, pa and I passed out, and Robin had to, like, force feed me uh, chicken McNuggets, which were delicious, but they tasted like defeat. And <laughs> as I was coming to, she was like, Whitney, what were you doing? And I said, I became vegan because I want you to be my girlfriend. And she said, Whitney, I, I can't be your girlfriend. If I was your girlfriend, then we would have to fight all the time. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Fight all the time? She could have said anything, by the way. She could have said, Whitney, I can't be your girlfriend. I have a boyfriend. Whitney, I can't be your girlfriend. I'm straight. Whitney, I can't be your girlfriend. You're eight. <laughs> we would have to fight all the time? That's ruined me for years. Still, I'm still messed up. And so on New Year's Eve, there's this woman who looks like Robin. Um, it's not Robin, though, the woman on New Year's Eve. This woman, uh, her name is Courtney, but she spells it C-O-R-T-N-I. So imagine that person, and you're nailing her. <laughs> And Courtney goes, I don't know what to do. My boyfriend's in the other room, but I think you're so attractive. I don't know what to do. And I said, I think you need to have a conversation with your boyfriend, I guess. I don't know how to help you here. And she said, no, I don't need to. We're in an open relationship. And I said, oh, does your boyfriend know? And she said, no. <laughs> just cheating. That's all you're trying to do is just cheating. And so I wanted to get away from her and I went outside to, to smoke a cigarette. And as I was out there, she followed me. And she came up to me and was like, I just think that you're so beautiful. And then she started to cry. And when someone tells you you're beautiful and then starts to cry, it feels less like a compliment and more like a threat. <laughs> oh, does my beauty make you cry because you have to kill me now? <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, God. Your face is gonna look so good on my face. Oh, God. Uh. And then Courtney goes, Courtney goes, I'm gonna kiss you now. Which is great. Always announce before you assault. That's all that it takes. <laughs> and then she does. She grabs my face and she, and she, and she kissed me. And truthfully, kiss is a strong word because it was mostly teeth. <laughs> it's like her teeth were mad at mine and didn't want mine to be there anymore. It was just... I was like, oh, fuck, Jesus. <laughs> and I pulled back away from her. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And she was like, I just wanted to kiss you. And I said, you can't just kiss people. And she was like, yeah, but I need to figure some stuff out. And I was like, I don't want to be the person that you figure stuff out with. And she was like, why are we fighting? And I was like, I don't know. I guess you're my girlfriend. <laughs> you guys have been great. I'm Whitney Chipman. Have a good night.